Fires and pruning. How do they apply to everyday life? What is the basic premise of this presentation? In this series, I have sought to present scriptures as evidence, and not just to present theories and opinions. Because when we meditate on a large number of scriptures, that are all related, it can become clear what patterns God is wanting to establish. This scriptural evidence is for individuals to sift through. and to let the Holy Spirit unlock to them as they are ready. This needs to happen in the way that is relevant to them. The thoughts I have presented along with these scriptures may well seem contrary to traditional teaching. But what must happen is that we are taught by the Holy Spirit from the Word. This particular presentation is really a supplement to follow on from the earlier one in this series Hell, Judgment and Eternity and it details the processes that God is taking us through in everyday life. Part 1. God shakes what is sinful in us to expose the impurities and remove them. Chapter 1, we all face seasons in our lives in which there is a shaking. To 
expose the true state of our heart. and to remove those things that are not part of God's kingdom. The irritations and difficulties in daily life are, in part, the fire that brings the dross of the old flesh self to the surface. And exposes the impurity that lurks within. The Bible uses the picture of fire causing melting. And making the dross come to the surface. This relates well to the irritations in daily life. or difficulties imposed on us by other people. Or calamities such as death or war or terror. These things cause a response in us. a reaction such as anger, defensiveness, annoyance, or perhaps fear and insecurity. These events Show us the things that lurk within. As they rise to the surface, they often remain undisturbed until sufficient pressure is put on by such troubles. But who can endure the day of Jesus' coming? For he is like a refiner's fire and like fuller's soap. He sits as a smelter and purifier of silver. and he purifies God's people and refines them like gold and silver. So that they may present offerings to the Lord in righteousness. Malachi 3 God tries the feelings 
and the heart. Jeremiah 11 For the word of God is able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. Hebrews 4 Examine me, Lord, and try me. Test my mind and my heart. Psalms 26 The Lord your God has led you in the wilderness these forty years testing you to know what was in your heart he let you be hungry God was disciplining you just as a man disciplines his son. Deuteronomy 8 The refining pot is for silver and the furnace for gold and the Lord tests hearts. Proverbs 17 God shakes us in the spiritual part that is the heavenlies. So that only his kingdom remains. The rest that is the sinful kingdom is removed and destroyed. In this process, we ourselves are set free. Do not refuse him who is speaking. who warns from the heavenlies and his voice shook the earth then but now also the heavenlies this expression yet once more denotes the removing of those things which can be shaken so that those things which cannot be shaken may remain. We receive a kingdom which cannot be shaken.
Hebrews 12 The eyes of the Lord God are on the sinful kingdom and I destroy it from the face of the earth. Nevertheless, I do not totally destroy the house of Jacob. declares the Lord. For behold, I am commanding and I shake the house of Israel among all nations as grain is shaken in a sieve. but not a kernel falls to the ground. All that is sinful in my people dies by the sword. I restore the captivity of my people. Amos 9 Everyone who comes to me and hears my words and acts on them, I will show you whom he is like. He is like a man building a house who dug deep and laid a foundation on the rock. And when a flood occurred, the torrent burst against that house and could not shake it, because it had been well built. But the one who has heard, and has not acted accordingly, is like a man who built a house on the ground. without any foundation. And the torrent burst against it. And immediately it collapsed. And the ruin of that house was great. Luke 6 Chapter 2 Our focus should be on working with God to remove those impurities that have been identified It's one thing to have these characteristics of the old nature identified as a result of our coming under fire and shaking and pressure. They now have to be removed. Which is the next part 
of the process. This removal seems to be equivalent to what the Bible describes as being cut off or circumcised. The removal of the body of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. Colossians 2 Every branch in me that does not bear fruit the Father takes away and every branch that bears fruit he prunes it so that it may bear more fruit. If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away as a branch and dries up, and they gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. These things I have spoken to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be made full. John 15 Therefore see and understand the kindness and severity of God. To those who fell, severity. But to you, God's kindness. if you continue in his kindness. Otherwise you also will be cut off. Romans 11 Chapter 3 When we are in the middle of the fire and its troubles, it can be hard for us to imagine a positive outcome. When we are right in the middle of them, we not only see the troubles we are facing, but we also see our reactions flaring up.
for my soul has had enough troubles. And my life has drawn near to Sheol. I am reckoned among those who go down to the pit. I have become like a man without strength. Forsaken among the dead. Like the slain who lie in the grave. Whom you remember no more. And they are cut off from your hand. You have put me in the lowest pit, in dark places, in the depths. Your wrath has rested upon me, and you have afflicted me with all your waves. You have removed my acquaintances far from me. You have made me an object of loathing to them. I am shut up and cannot go out. Psalms 88 And the Lord appointed a great fish to swallow Jonah and Jonah was in the stomach of the fish Three days and three nights. Then Jonah prayed to the Lord his God. From the stomach of the fish. And he said, I called out of my distress to the Lord. And he answered me. I cried for help from the depths of Sheol. You heard my voice. For you had cast me into the deep, into the heart of the seas. And the current engulfed me. All your breakers and billows passed over me. So I said, I have been expelled from your sight. To look again toward your holy temple. Jonah 1 and 2 This separation from God, being in Sheol, finding ourselves in the depths of hell, 
should encourage us to look to him. And to the temple he is creating in our heart. However, the outcome of these troubles is good news, liberty. This is what Jesus quoted from Isaiah 61. The Spirit of the Lord is on me, because he anointed me to bring the good news to the poor. He has sent me to announce freedom to the captives, and recovery of sight to the blind, to issue the order that those being broken in pieces be sent to freedom. Luke 4 Chapter 4. The Training Continues To trim and maintain whatever regenerates. The impurities, the dross, may be cut off but they somehow seem to try to regenerate which is why God continues to provide us with similar fire experiences to keep them trimmed. Then further circumstances cause them to be burned. Otherwise they regenerate more than before. His judgments are in fact his continual pruning. They continue without ceasing day and night. When the unclean spirit goes out of a man, it passes through waterless places, seeking rest, and not finding any, it says, I will return to my house from which I came. And when it comes, it finds it swept and put in order. Then it goes and takes along seven other spirits more evil than itself and they go in and live there and the last state of that man becomes worse than the first Luke 11 
If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away as a branch and dries up. And they gather them and cast them into the fire. And they are burned. John 15 Christ will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. He will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. Luke 3 This is fire that will not go out until it has finished consuming all the rubbish. My son, do not regard lightly the discipline of the Lord. Nor faint when you are reproved by him. For those whom the Lord loves, he disciplines. and he scourges every son whom he receives. It is for discipline that you endure. God deals with you as with sons. For what son is there whom his father does not discipline. But if you are without discipline, of which all have become partakers, then you are illegitimate children and not sons. Furthermore, we had earthly fathers to discipline us, and we respected them. So shall we not much rather be subject to the Father of spirits and live? For they disciplined us for a short time, as seemed best to them. But he disciplines us for our good, so that we may share his holiness. All discipline for the moment seems not to be joyful, but sorrowful. Yet to those who have been trained by it, afterwards it yields the peaceful fruit of righteousness. Hebrews 12 
this was fires and pruning. Part 1